Hello, I'm Christian Drabeck from the Fraunhofer Institute for Cognitive Systems, IKS, in Munich, Germany. I have the pleasure to present you the results of our joint research project with Hitachi, in which we looked into a concept for the safe interaction of driverless industrial trucks and humans in shared areas of a warehouse. Driverless industrial trucks are, among other names, often also referred to as automated guided vehicles, short ADV, or autonomous mobile robots. I will first talk about critical interactions of human workers and driverless industrial trucks in shared areas that we want to safeguard. Because of the chosen use case, we often focus on automated forklifts as driverless industrial trucks, but the presented concept applies in general. Afterwards, I will briefly present an architecture that can safely integrate infrastructure sensor information into the control process. This architecture serves as framework for our concept for safe interactions. Finally, I will discuss the results from the simulation we performed to estimate the benefit of using the suggested concept. So what critical interactions did we consider? We focused on the movement of automated forklifts. Therefore, we examined different situations when the paths of automated forklifts and human workers could cross. Blind corners are nearly unavoidable in warehouses. You will find them, for example, at the end of shelves, like in this image from our simulation. I'm sure you could spot the human in the picture, but would you also have been able to do this in a moving vehicle? Similar, the forklift is not very easy to see from the other side and the attention of the human worker might be on something else. Of course, if everyone stops to look before entering an intersection, this can be handled safely. But wouldn't you save a lot of time if you only had to slow down what is actually necessary? In previous work, we already examined how critical situations at known blind corners can be detected and handled. However, this requires them to be known and their locations might continually change as goods are moved. In this work, we examined how the concept for detection of critical situations can be applied to the entire warehouse without identifying the blind corners beforehand. What is covered by existing safety standards? So, well, there are laws for the protection of human safety, like the Machinery Directive in the EU, and of course, national laws. Among others, there are standards that are harmonized with the Machinery Directive. They either cover general aspects and design principles or a wide range of machinery or they focus on particular machines like the ISO 36914 for driverless industrial trucks. This is accompanied by guidelines that describe the interdisciplinary design of AGV systems or suggest standardized communication interfaces. The ISO 36914 describes different zones of operation that depend on possible crush or shearing hazards for a person and res access restrictions to the area. They and the available personal detection means influence the maximum allowed speed of the AGV. For the operation at rated speeds of the driverless industrial truck, gaps of at least half a meter on each side and personal detection in the direction of travel is required. But this only needs to avoid collisions with a stationary person. Persons stepping into the pass or moving towards it are explicitly exempt. Thus, risks for moving humans in the use case at hand need to be identified by applying more general techniques. They are in the end often mitigated by common practices like defining safety rules that humans must follow. Of course, the standard also details requirements for other subsystems of AGVs, but they are less relevant for the interactions with workers in the warehouse. Systems that take more responsibility for the safety and can truly cooperate with humans are still a vision for the future, as for example also the ISC outlines in their white paper. So, how could a well-working, highly automated warehouse look like? For example, autonomous forklifts move goods and are controlled or orchestrated centrally from a local cloud. As access and changes to the warehouse can usually be predicted, this can be considered a controlled environment. Here, it is crucial to be able to move goods quickly when needed. So, 
efficiently and with minimal downtimes. You may also want to share sensor data, for example observations from robots that can improve machine learning, or additional information from infrastructure cameras that can complement the mobile robot sensors. As the situation is predictable, you do not need to share every detail, but it might be enough to have the information if the robot can, for example, speed past an intersection safely. Using infrastructure support also makes it easier to track the locations of human workers and robots. It is not always possible or feasible to completely segregate human workers and AGVs, especially if you are in the face of adapting to mobile robots. Hence, why there might be a need for shared areas, and this is also when safety suddenly gets more attention again. The additional sensor information can also help to avoid collisions. As discussed, there can be various dangerous situations in a warehouse. However, increased automation also provides a chance to improve the situation if we decide to burden the system with this responsibility. So, how can we use infrastructure sensors to support AGVs in their cooperation with humans? For this, we present an infrastructure cooperative autonomous control architecture. In the automated forklift, or AGV in general, we have an actuator control with the personal detection mechanism and emergency stop required by the ISO 36914. The forklift is also able to navigate within the warehouse. The warehouse control system supports it in the path planning and can optimize task allocation. A block access control coordinates the movement of automated vehicles. The area monitor system contains the infrastructure sensors and the perception chain. This provides additional feedback to the traffic control system. But more important, this information can be used to detect hazardous situations. For example, if a person is near an intersection that an AGV is about to pass, then an according safety action can be sent to the AGV. We will take a closer look at the decision on the following slides. If the system takes more responsibility to provide more safety, it must do so reliably. Therefore, infra cooperation performance monitors in the forklift and the area monitor system actively observe the performance of the safety functions and enable preventive measures, for example, if insufficient information is available. In brief, the proposed architecture ensures safety in three ways block control, area monitor, and emergency stop. This enables collision avoidance in advance and reduces unnecessary deceleration of the AGV. So let's investigate hazardous situations at a blind corner from the perspective of the AGV. When does it have to make the decision to brake? Well, the point when it has to start decelerating can be easily determined by calculating the needed braking distance. At this point, the decision must have been made and communicated to the AGV's actuators. Otherwise, the AGV will not be able to stop before it enters the intersection. However, the information to make this decision must already be gathered before to allow for it to be processed and transmitted. This determines a point of observation. So what area needs to be checked for nearby human workers? Well, in simple terms, human workers are in potential conflict with the AGV if they could enter the intersection before the AGV can exit it. To be not in conflict, humans need to be further away, including a margin for uncertainties like imprecision of sensors or delays. Unless the AGV is already moving very slow and with a big gap to the side, it will usually not be able to cover the complete conflict areas with its onboard line of sight sensors. A more formal description of this is also provided in the paper. In this work, we wanted to enable conflict detection without knowing where blind corners are, so we applied the check for any point on the forklift's trajectory. Again, the conflict area needs to be determined. This is the area where human workers might be in potential conflict with the forklift's trajectory. For this, we use the time the forklift needs to reach the point on the trajectory. 
The radius of the conflict area is the maximal distance the human worker can travel in that time. As sensors are not perfect, the detection area should be slightly bigger to account for imprecisions and delays. Checking for the presence of human workers in this detection area tests the selected point on the trajectory for potential conflicts. The hazardous situation detection must ensure that the forklift can always reach a safe state, for example, stop at a convenient position. This means that any considered trajectory must end in a safe state. Then, conflict detection needs to be performed for every point along the trajectory. So, a human worker in any of the conflict areas shown here could potentially interfere with the trajectory in an unsafe way. To speed up the check, the detection area can be approximated by an isoscale trapezoid and a half disk. Depending on the available safety actions, the cloud servers can check different variants of the trajectories and send the safety action to the forklift that will result in safe and optimal behavior. As validation always considers a complete trajectory to a safe state, the automated vehicle is guaranteed to be able to reach this safe state with no further updates. Any update is more than optimization and thereby could be safely missed. Now, trajectories are not always straight and might be more complex. Waypoints can be placed along the trajectory to identify where the forklift will turn or change speed. Thereby, the trajectory can be segmented into straight pieces. Then, the presented check can be applied for each of these segments independently. The radius of the half disk for the check at the waypoint depends on the distance a human worker can travel until the forklift reaches the waypoint and the detection margin. This also determines the size of the base for the following segment. The half disk size is determined by the time the forklift takes to travel the complete trajectory. When multiple trajectories for a forklift are calculated, identical segments need only be evaluated once, which could be used to further speed up the check. We evaluated the effects of the presented concept for safe interaction of industrial trucks and human workers on an overall warehouse. For this, we created simulations including typical warehouse scenes. The scenario was derived from industrial experiences and existing applications. The bird's eye view of the warehouse is shown here. It comprises of the following main areas. A permanent storage area in blue, a temporary storage area in gray, and a human-only areas in green. In this scenario, workers are inspecting goods in the temporary storage area. The simulated human workers move along the shown paths with a speed of 1.5 meters per second, which is slightly higher than average walking speed. At the indicated positions, they move in small circles to simulate the inspection. To keep the warehouse busy, they start a new inspection cycle right when they reach the end of the path. 60 variations are created by changing the start of set along the path in a regular packet pattern. Automated forklifts are tasked with the transport of goods from the temporary storage area to the permanent storage area and vice versa. Therefore, they move between checkpoints in each area. The serious checkpoint indicates the starting position. Afterwards, they cycle between the checkpoint 1 and 2. Navigations for the automated forklifts are indicated by the white arrows. Forklifts may travel in direction of the arrow only. The cloud will plan routes and waypoints for each forklift and provide it with a permission how far it may proceed. For this, the navigation options have been split into blocks of approximately 9 square meter size. The permissions from block control ensure that only one automated forklift will occupy a block simultaneously thereby preventing collisions between automated forklifts. For safe interaction with humans, we evaluated four safety concepts to compare distinct safety considerations in a warehouse. 
Safety Concept Zero uses the rated speed of the forklift anywhere unless its local sensors detect a human. Safety Concept One uses uh, the hazardous zone speed for the temporary storage area and the rated speed otherwise. Safety Concept Slow and Stop use the hazardous situation detection provided by our presented concept architecture. Safety Concept Slow uses the safety action Slow Down. Safety Concept Stop always uses Stop. To challenge the robustness of the approach, the algorithm only checks for conflicts every 0.3 seconds. For any safety concept, local emergency stop of the automated forklift is active and will cause the forklift to stop. We ran the described scenario with 60 different initial offsets of the human workers for each of the four safety concepts. As measure for safety, we counted the number of hazardous collisions. A collision was considered hazardous if the speed of the autonomous forklift was higher than the assumed safe speed of 1.2 meters per second. Without implementing human behavior of avoiding a safely stopped automated forklift, which was out of the scope of this work, all collisions locked when an autonomous forklift was moving at slow speed or slower are considered as not severe and easily avoidable in the real situation. Therefore, the simulation also continued after collisions. For validation purposes, cases of human workers touching completely stopped forklifts were still locked, but they do not contribute to the safety metric. Safety concept 1 will, by definition, never cause an unsafe collision as forklifts are slowed down already. Slow and stop also avoid all unsafe collisions. Further, safety concept stop allows automated forklifts to completely stop before almost all collisions. Thereby, it does not only avoid severe collisions, but almost all collisions and requires no collision avoidance by human workers. However, this comes with a slight cost in performance. To measure performance, we track the total distance the two automated forklifts traveled for each scenario and safety concept. As safety concept zero, the results of the simulation clearly show that areas shared by autonomous vehicles and human workers or human-driven vehicles require novel approaches to assure safety and to keep the performance on satisfactory level. In this case, safety cannot rely on sensors and systems embedded into vehicles only. Additionally, it is advantageous that modern mobile robots are often already connected to cloud-based systems, for example for task planning and navigation purposes. Using infrastructure sensors and sharing information about location of humans makes the system more complex, but it also allows avoiding dangerous collisions while maintaining high system performance. In the future, switching between the safety concepts dynamically could adapt the system even further to the experience and awareness of the personnel currently present in the shared area. Thank you for your attention.